Hello crafty friends, welcome to another clean and simple card making video. Yesterday I went for a little rummage around my local crafty charity shop. It's the Rowan's Hospice Craft Shop in Cow Plain, Hampshire. And it sells pre-loved and sometimes brand new craft supplies. All sorts of crafts, not just paper crafts, knitting, crochet, sewing, all that kind of thing. I went in and thought I'd see what I can find, if I could find any bargains. I always find bargains, so I knew I was going to come out with something. But I did find, amongst other things, this stamp set and these dies. I don't know the manufacturer of these stamps, but they are silicone stamps and they're blocky with a scripty font. I've got this set here from Woodware, which I really enjoy using. And I thought these would be a nice complement. So these are blocky with printed type words on and these are more scripty handwritten words so I'm going to use that today and then these dies are from Heartfelt Creations it was something like a small petunia set I think they're supposed to be a set of stamps that go with it but the stamps weren't there it was just the dies and I thought well they're an absolute bargain and I can really see me getting a lot of use out of these and making lots of cards they're quite interesting little flowers these are the leaves and you can cut multiple out in one pass through the die cutting machine. So I thought they're perfect. So I'm going to use these today, not the big ones, the little ones. So I think we'll start by die cutting some flowers using this scrap of hammered white cardstock. So I've got five flowers here and to colour them I'm going to use wilted violet, picked raspberry and scattered straw. I think they make a nice varied colour combination. So I'm going to use my finger daubers. And I've put these on a grip mat just to stop them flying around my craft room. I'll do two purple, one pink, pink, and maybe two yellows. We'll get the yellow away from the pink just in case I transfer some colour where I don't want it. And now to add a little bit of variation, I've got, this is Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide Finger Dauber. I haven't re-inked it, but I'm just going to tap on a bit of it towards the middle of the flowers. So there's a bit of variation in colour and intensity. The pink here, I've got Festive Berries. Again, I've not re-inked it. And I think with the yellow, we'll do Squeezed Marmalade. No, Spiced Marmalade. <laughs> I might get the scatter straw because I pressed a little bit hard on that one. So if we can blend that out a bit, yeah, that's fine. Just press, not quite so hard this time. So, got some nice variation in colour. I'm going to wipe my mat because I'm going to do green leaves next and I don't want to get those colours on my leaves. And for these, I'm going to use iced spruce. And I've just grabbed this one, it's a darker green, and I'm going to tap that around the edge just to darken the edges and bring in variation again. I don't need to worry about getting in the gap there towards the middle because that's going to be covered up by the flower once I stick it on top. So it's just the tips of these that need a bit of colour on them. Now I've got my flowers, I'm just going to gently press down in the middle to make them curl forward a little bit. Give them a bit of dimension. Oh, I do need to cut some more leaves, don't I? I didn't think of that, actually. Hmm. So we'll pop that on there, we'll put that on there, and I'm just gonna snip off one leaf, because now I can use that on another one, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just so we've got enough leaves to go around. So these yellow flowers are just going to get one little leaf peeking out each. Again, that brings in some variation. It's not all identical. There we go. I think I rescued that. So I've got here a die that cuts this lovely kind of Moroccan tile aperture in a card panel. This is a very old die from the works, so I don't think they sell it anymore, but you might be able to find it on somewhere like eBay. And I want to put this here on this stitched rectangle panel that's going to be the front of my card. 
and cut an aperture in it. I'm going to hold it in place with some sticky note. Put this bit of card here to protect the front of my card panel from the scratches in my cutting plate and then run it through my cuttle bug. I find with intricate dies like this it can be helpful to run it through the die cutting machine twice or add an extra bit of card to act as a shim just to increase the press pressure slightly. So I'm happy with that and I'm going to stick that on the front of my card panel. I'm not going to put any foam in between. I think I don't need physical dimension. I think that's got enough kind of texture and dimension. I'm going to carefully run some tape runner. I can get it to work. Down that edge there. And just so that the mesh bit sticks nicely, I'm going to pick up some matte gel medium with my dedicated glue dauber and daub it over there. And now I can add this to my four by six inch card blank. And I'll press that down with a bit of non-stick deli paper. I often get asked what make this deli paper is. It is Logan Wrap interfolded waxed paper this is the small size uh, i have looked it up on amazon which is where i bought it from quite a few years ago now as you can tell from the box and i don't think they sell this size anymore but you can find the larger size i think the medium size and the large size you could always cut some sheets down if you don't need them that size so i think we're ready to think about where we want our flowers maybe a little bunch of flowers around here somewhere with a sentiment sticking out here and that will help me pick what size I want. I think I might go for an on your wedding day. I think that would work nicely there. And obviously you could make your flowers tie in with the colour scheme of the wedding if you knew it. Or if you didn't know the colour scheme and you wanted to go something really classy and elegant, you could just do white flowers and white leaves. As this is a new unused silicone stamp, I'm going to key the surface by rubbing it with a sand eraser. It's a rough eraser and it's a great way of making silicone stamps more receptive to whatever ink you put on top of them. It just roughens, roughens, roughs up, roughs up the surface slightly and makes the ink bead up less. Clean off the rubbing, oops, has it gone? It's gone over there. Clean that off with a microfiber cloth, stick that on there. What I'm gonna do, I think, is heat emboss this in gold. It's rather a mucky ink pad, this one, but that's okay because any muck on the ink that transfers will be covered up by the gold. I'm going to do that twice because I can see that there's a little bit near the day that hasn't picked up the ink and that's one of the benefits of using a mucky ink pad is that you can actually see where you stamp your embossing ink. Now I forgot to treat that with anti-static powder but we'll just see if it works or not. If not I'll just do it again quickly. Right, I think that looks great actually. That's stamped really well and you can still read it and there's no embossing powder where I don't want it. And the easiest thing to do now for me is just to cut this out with a pair of scissors. I have noticed that the stamps in this stamp set are sort of wonky. The edges aren't perfectly straight so on this one I don't know if you can tell it seems to bend down ever so slightly so if I was to try and cut that out with a rectangle die it would be really obvious but if I use my scissors I can make sure the border that I'm giving it is the same all the way around so that can go in there like that and I'm thinking popping it up on a little bit of double-sided adhesive foam. So I think somewhere around there we can add that, get it roughly straight 
what we want is the writing to be straight even if the edge is a little bit wobbly and now we can place our flowers around here with a little bit of glue we can have them overlapping each other overlapping the sentiment but not the words i don't want the words obscured i mentioned in a previous video that i've switched from high tack pva glue to matte gel medium because i ran out of the high tack pva but i had plenty of matte gel medium and it's working out fine except for in situations like this where i want something to stick and stay stuck without being knockable around with the high tack pva glue these flowers would stay where i put them and not move because their glue is so sticky and tacky that it kind of grabs and stays even when it's not dry yet but this matte gel medium is not tacky you have to make sure everything is held down before it kind of really sticks so i might get some more of my high tack pva for using just in situations like this i do like the matte gel medium because when it dries it is matte as the name suggests so you don't get glossy smears on places where you've accidentally got glue so it's quite nice like that but i think you know right tool for the right job i'll get some high tack pva for when i want things to stick and stay put while they're drying okay time for some flower centers and i'm going to use my trusty nouveau drops a nice big blob in the middle of each flower or as close to the middle as i can get it and for a bit of extra bling because you can never have too much bling on a wedding card i don't think um i'm gonna add a few rogue drops here and there and i think that will do i'm happy with that i think it's clean and simple still because you've got more or less half the card without anything in it you've got some lovely dimension and texture here from this die and some bright vibrant flowers and a gold sentiment right if you'd like to stick around for a couple of more minutes i've got some more cards that i've made using these dies and i'll show you how i made them okay here's my first other card and i used this hexagon aperture die i think it's a sizzix die not 100 percent sure to cut an aperture in my card panel i didn't do a stitched rectangle i just did a plain rectangle and i colored the flowers a lot more lightly and only used three also i did a bit of uh, ombre stamping by using finger daubers to ink up the stamp with different inks so i used picked raspberry at this end wilted violet at this end and then sort of daubed in the middle to get the gradient nice so I like the way that one's turned out. I do like that slightly lighter, paler pastel colour. And again, we've got lots of lovely white space up here. For card number two, I didn't add a front panel to this one and I didn't add any other texture. I stamped my Happy Birthday in Wilted Violet straight on my card blank. I added my flowers around it like that. And then this stamp set has got some little icons butterfly star heart and an open star and i used the butterfly and the heart stamped those in picked raspberry and wilted violet and then i used a dot marker to add a couple of yellow dots to each one so that's quite a different look same supplies more or less but a different look for card number three i added texture using this net die looks a bit like trellis so i thought it went well with the flowers i didn't add a panel I think it does need a bit of a panel. I like the border that you get with a panel and I'm really loving, you might have noticed, the stitched rectangle panels. But anyway, I die cut this from white cardstock and stuck it on, added my flowers and then stamped a pink with all our love in picked raspberry. And as I say, I think it would benefit from a bit of a panel. And I think next time I use this die on this size card, I might cut it down slightly because I think there's a lot of uh, white space that we could gain down here. I think having the texture sort of concentrated around this area works well. This kind of feels a bit empty, but not in a good way. And you can probably see what I mean with this one. This is card number four. And I used this die another net die to die cut the net 
and because it's the size that it is it works really well in that top corner there and again I did the ombre stamping and arranged my three flowers like that so I'm loving that one and for my fifth and final card I used this net die to add my texture and I popped it in the middle it just really lends itself to going in the middle I think because it's uh, it's almost oval really it's um, rectangles and squares but the shape is almost oval and sits really nicely in the middle of a card I popped a lots of love ombre stamped sentiment in the middle and then added my flowers around it I did add some gold nouveau drops a couple of them have gone a bit weird because I added it over the texture but I might be able to peel those off and stick something else on or I might just leave it no one's gonna uh, turn their nose up are they Right, that's six cards made from my charity shop finds plus a few other dies thrown in for good measure. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's given you a few ideas. If it has, you know the drill. Please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Like, no, I've said that already, haven't I? Subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.